Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is why do eccentric flaring tools make the best mini split flares? So the secret has to do with how smooth it can make the inner part of the flare for where it attaches onto the flare adapter at. So you got to remember that on mini split systems, you have maybe four or 500 PSI during heating mode running through your vapor line. And so what's happening is you could end up having a leak coming out of the refrigerant joint right here if the flare face is scratched. So I'm going to show you how smooth this tool can make a flare. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to take you in for up close images of some scratched flares and then also some good flares. Here you have two examples of flares and this one on the right is all scratched up on the inside. The one on the left you see is completely fine. And so the problem has to do with surface contact on the copper while you're making your flares. Here's a standard cone right here. And you can see there's nothing special about that. It's just a standard one. It has to do also with how glossy the finish is on the cone. The, the glossier it is, the, the less porous it is, which means you're going to have a better flare joint. This version of the flare cone only allows a certain part of the cone to touch the copper at a time. So it's, it's less surface contact with the, the copper tubing. So that's, that's good. But this right here, I believe is the best design. You have a standard cone at the top, but it's set on rollers and it's set on angle. So as you're, you're, you're flaring your copper tube, it's just kind of wiggling back and forth and it's pressing out on the copper tube. It's not necessarily turning as you're flaring due to any friction, and so it's not able to scrape up the copper tube, which is exactly what you want. As well, it has a glossy finish right here, so it's not rough, so it's not going to be scraping grooves into your copper tubing. We're going to make a flare with our copper tube using our UDFT, which is our Uniwell Deluxe Flaring Tool. No matter what tool you use, you want to make sure that you put refrigerant wheel or nylog on the cone itself. So I'm going to change my zoom on the camera, and then I'll show you what that looks like. But well, basically what we're going to do is we're just going to take a little bit of nylog and a Q-tip. And we're going to rub it on the cone face here. Down on the inside you can see our eccentric cone. And we're going to be using this tool with our 3 8 copper tube. So that's 3 8 OD. And so we want to go ahead and switch this to 3 8 on the die setting. And for this one right here as well. So three eighths, so right there and right there. Now we also have a depth guide, so we can just press that forward and that'll stop our copper tube in place. And now we're gonna get ready to put our copper tube in, but before we do that, we wanna make sure that our copper tube is deburred. So this right here, it's very sharp. I'm gonna take you in for up close image of that. So you see how sharp that is? That actually can cut into the cone, so you wanna make sure, not only for the sake of your flare, but also for the sake of your tool, Make sure you're deburring that. So you want to get something that looks like this. We're going to ream our copper tube. So I stay away from stick reamers and I always use just the, the deburring wheel because I want to make sure to not end up scarring on the inside of the copper tube where my flare face is going to be. So now I just set that down in there and I just tighten it in place. And you see the drill there, we're actually going to be using a drill on this tool in order to make our flares. You can use the ratcheting wrench that comes with it, or you can use a drill to end up doing your flares. So if you're making a lot, you can just use your drill. That's it. So there's our copper tube flare. Let me go ahead and magnify the camera so you can see it. So it's very, very smooth. You see that? That's going to be a fantastic flare joint. I wanted to show you that not only does this need to be smooth, but you need to make this at the right depth. So it needs to cover the entire flare adapter in order to make a good seal. If it's too small, then it's just not going to make a good enough seal. And that's the whole point of having the depth guide on that tool. But that's it. So I also have other flaring and swaging videos down in the description section below. And make sure to go over to our website where we have a bunch of free resources for HVACR techs. 
such as an article on mini split charging, vacuum tips, we've got a bunch of quizzes there, we have HVACR calculators, Q&A, and the podcast. So make sure you check all those free resources out over at acservicetech.com. Also make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning paperback and ebook. We have our paperback available over on Amazon. You can see all the, the different reviews that people have left there. And we also have that available over at our website. Our ebook is available at our website over at Google Play and also at the Apple App Store. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.